Part 1. Activates. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 1 8. Chapter 1 Healing and the Gospel. Then and Now. How do you receive and release God's supernatural power to heal the sick? First, you do not need to convince God to use you, He is already set on that. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then you are already qualified for the healing ministry. To receive this power, you simply need to believe that the Holy Spirit within you is capable of healing the sick. Your belief does not add to or subtract anything from God's power working in you. The Bible is truth. What we believe is important because it determines how we respond to truth. If we do not believe the Spirit of God within us desires to heal others through us, we will not appropriate and release His healing power. It's available. It's within you. You simply need to step out. Believe you are anointed. Trust that God wants to use you. And start taking risks. Lack of knowledge is one barrier that keeps many Christians from stepping out in the healing ministry. Either they have been given incorrect information about God's ability or willingness to heal, or they have simply heard nothing about it at all. In the pages ahead, I want to lay out the basic essentials of God's healing power and biblically clarify that He still heals today. Healing Today Healing the sick is not a side issue. It is actually a key benefit of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. While He came to forgive our sins and remove the barrier that separated humanity from God, His work on the cross also made provision for our physical healing. We see this prophetically expressed in Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5, which speaks of the coming Messiah. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus is the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, who carries our infirmities and our diseases. This provision for divine healing in the atonement is confirmed later on in Matthew 8, verses 16 to 17 as Matthew's evidence that Jesus was fulfilling Isaiah 53. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases and the Apostle Peter confirms it in his epistle, describing the Lord's passion, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. We live in a fallen world that has been stained by sin. This is why we have sickness, disease, and illness. Emotional dysfunction and torments abound because this planet is still under the influence of the prince of the power of the air, who is Satan. See Ephesians 2.2 Medical and psychiatric help can benefit many people. In fact, the very practice of medicine in and of itself reveals the healing heart of God. 
He desires for people to be whole and restored in every area of their lives. Sometimes medical help is slow, unhelpful, and even detrimental. The fact of the matter is that we cannot place our ultimate confidence in medicine as it is fallible. This is why it is so important for you to learn to release God's power in your life. The world is looking for answers. People are desperate for solutions to their maladies. While we as believers do not claim to have all the answers, we are filled with the spirit of the one who has all wisdom, power, and healing virtue. Alone, we have nothing. But filled with Christ, we have everything. It is through the atoning work of Jesus that God provides many blessings for the world He so loves. Jesus' victory over the dominion of darkness is absolutely complete. The power of His blood impacts every realm of living, the spirit, soul, and body. For us to truly live in the atonement means we live from a position of absolute victory which includes freedom over bondage to sin, shame, guilt, demonic oppression, torment, curses, satanic activity, sickness, disease, and emotional illness. This is what the cross has made available to you and to everyone else who receives its fullness. As Christians, we have a wealth of inheritance to draw from. We do not need to twist God's arm to give these things to us. They are freely provided. It's time for us to access everything God makes available to believers and to start releasing these things to the world around us. For a more complete understanding of how to access your inheritance in Christ, I encourage you to read, There is More. The Secret to Experiencing God's Power to Change Your Life In its pages, you will find a more comprehensive teaching on how you can personally appropriate God's blessings for yourself or have them activated through impartation. Right now, however, I want us to focus on laying a foundation for stepping into the ministry of healing it's time for you to freely give what you have freely received in Christ. Interestingly enough, the very context of this phrase, freely received, freely give, is supernatural ministry. As Jesus was instructing his disciples, he said, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10, verses 7 to 8. In Christ, you have freely received God's supernatural power. Now it's time to activate and freely release what you have received through the atonement. Healing and the Gospel Some who claim to believe in divine healing are quick to classify it as secondary to the miracle of salvation, the new birth. Of course, this is true. There is no greater miracle than a dead heart converted from darkness and translated into the kingdom of God. See Colossians 1.13 However, in our effort to emphasize the priority and pricelessness of salvation, we tend to give healing an improper, subservient role in advancing the gospel. Recognize that supernatural healing is not a side item separate from the gospel. It is part of the gospel of the kingdom of God. If you have ever heard the term full gospel, it usually describes a message that is accompanied by power. Paul made this very clear when he wrote, 
The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 While there is a verbal element to sharing the gospel, the complete and full presentation of this message comes through supernatural demonstration. Consider once again the words of Paul, who concludes his letter to the church in Rome. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me, in word and deed, to make the Gentiles obedience, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Romans 15, verses 18 to 19. To embrace a full or complete gospel is to believe that we have been given more than just teaching or a message. It is to believe that our message is one that is delivered through power. When power is released, the gospel is actually presented in proclamation and demonstration. This is why Paul likely used the phrase, fully preached the gospel of Christ. He did not simply come with a message comprised of words, oration, and eloquence. The Greeks were quite proficient in delivering swirling words using their stunning oratory skills. As believers, we carry something greater than philosophy or knowledge. God Himself dwells within us and delivers His message to the world using miracles, signs, and wonders. This is the gospel of the kingdom we are to proclaim. John the Baptist proclaimed this gospel in the wilderness. See Matthew 3.2 When Jesus arrived on the scene, not only did he continue to preach this gospel, but he also demonstrated it. He gave visible expression to what this gospel looked like. I want to pause here and clarify for those who are wrestling with a gospel of the kingdom paradigm. This paradigm does not count salvation as merely one blessing among others. Conversion is absolutely pivotal for entry into the kingdom. Salvation was and is the exclusive means by which someone enters the kingdom of God. There is no other means of entry into the kingdom except through believing in the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a Christian, you have experienced this incredible spiritual transformation. But here is the problem so many believers face today. You've made Jesus Lord of your life. You have experienced a life-changing conversion. You were translated out of darkness into the family of God. You eagerly anticipate your home in heaven one day. The logical question is, what about today? We cannot buy into a gospel that works in heaven, but not on earth. The gospel is every bit as relevant to us on earth today as it will be in heaven. Jesus did not inaugurate a system that would only become useful after we die or when he returns to earth in the second coming. His atoning work on the cross made it possible for you and me to become vessels of God's power, continuing Jesus' restorative mission on earth today.